earlier in our conversation, you said that periodically there are these crises in physics, yeah. and the black hole war is one of them. It's no, I, I wasn't thinking about the black hole. I was thinking about these crises where experiments don't seem to agree, or where experiments seem to disagree with theory. An example being the gyromagnetic ratio of the muon. Uh, which if you use the same physics as for the electron, you get a certain number from ordinary quantum field theory, uh, quantum electrodynamics in that case. But if you measure it, somewhere in the 12 decimal place or something, the experiment and the, um, and, uh, the calculation disagreed. This is one example of the kind of crisis I was talking about. Crises which usually have to do with discrepancies between theory and experiment. Why do they happen? Why, they, why are they always there? And the reason is because both theory and experiment are always working on the edge of the technology. Experiment for obvious reasons, they're, they're very hard. You don't do an experiment now in three weeks. It's uh, the better part of a scientific lifetime to do an experiment. It can take 20, 30 years to do an experiment. They're very, very hard. And you're always working at the very, very edge of the technology. You're working at the edge of the statistical fluctuations and things. And at the same time, if the experiments previous to that had pushed the theory so hard that you might be working in the 12th decimal place of the, uh, of the theory. So it's not, to my mind, at all surprising that a period takes place where there's a discrepancy and everybody gets very exercised about it and very worried about it, and then it goes away, mm -hmm. and then it goes away. Okay, so we're facing now a, no a couple of uh, these kind of crises in cosmology. Right now? Yeah. There's one that's called the Hubble tension. Uh, the Hubble tension, you know what the Hubble constant is. It's the rate of expansion of the universe today. Uh, um, there are two ways of determining it. One is by direct observation of objects moving away from us, measuring their um, velocity and their distance. It's, of course, not so simple. You use supernova and all kinds of things, but, uh, but it's sort of direct measurement of the expansion of the universe today, or at least seen from uh, through tele ordinary telescopes or maybe fancy telescopes. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that was one calculation. It leads to a certain number. I think it's 74 something per something per something. Uh, kilometers per second per megaparsec, but, uh, okay, so that was one measurement of the, um, of the Hubble expansion. There was another method which you go way back to the era when the cosmic microwave radiation was being formed in the very hot plasma. You can see that at a great distance away from us. You have to go, you want to go way back in time. The way you go way back in time is going to very large distances. You measure the properties of the cosmic microwave background. <coughs> you use it to inform you about what was going on at that time. And then you use the equations of cosmology to run it from the very remote past up till today. Freeman, Robertson, Walker equations, some knowledge about equations of state, this, that, and the other things, stuff having to do with something called uh, baryonic acoustic uh, oscillations, doesn't matter what it is. It's using a theory about what happened 13.8 billion, uh, billion years ago, and then using equations to, um, to extrapolate it to today. It disagrees with, uh, with that 74. It gives you 68 or something. Well, what's the difference between 68 and 74? No big deal. Unless you happen to be either the group who did one experiment or the other and who are absolutely convinced that they are correct. Okay? And uh, that's what's happening now. Both experiments are kind of at the edge of uh, technology. Nevertheless, the proponents of these two numbers 
who are you know wonderful physicists uh, 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 these are not amateurs these are not uh, uh, these are super uh, good scientists one group is absolutely certain their number is correct and the other group is absolutely certain their number is correct one resolution might be that something unknown or, or unaccounted for happened in between during this time uh, from the microwave radiation to today, it's possible, but that's a crisis now. Will that crisis go away? Will, uh, or will some new physics come in between? We don't know. I, I always guess, it doesn't matter what it is, when a crisis like this happens, I always guess it's going to go away. And I've almost always been right. Why do you say almost? What's the exception? I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah. Uh, very early on, I, I do remember. Very early on, Jim Peebles he was claiming that there was some evidence for something like dark energy for something like a cosmological constant or a little bit different perhaps this was long ago and he was quoting data um, I thought that seemed very unlikely to me that there was a, a cosmological constant that seemed uh, and I was pretty sure that his data was probably uh, well no his data was right there was a cosmological constant I was wrong about that one Okay, that's funny. Yeah. Well, I th as far as I can remember, I think it's the only one I was wrong about. Not because I'm such a genius, but because I always say it's going to go away. <laughs> <laughs>